tonight. Nobody wants to do that. Is there any thought about the top of that garage area being a green patio or something else? We have thought about that for building two and three. Um, like, so we're going to cover the, uh, the ramp entrance with precast and actually create a green area with that also. Uh, but we have looked at, but we can't, right now it's going to be hard to have that accessible to the people who live there. That's why the roof may or may not be a green roof. Green roofs are going down in price. I've done two or three of them. They can be extremely expensive, uh, but it's something we are looking at. Thank you. Alderman Police. <laughs> John, what you were saying earlier is basically keep the colors of the bricks, but getting rid of the aluminum. Was that your motion? That, that's or? my that's my strong suggestion. Keep keep the brick colors patterns right where they are. Let them change out as aluminum to, to that stone ledge detail, and then of course the roofs and in encasing those uh, those otherwise open balconies. Okay. So, uh, Alderman Eugene Wesley. I have. Um, who is the owner of this property now? What, what is the company? That owns? What's Wooddale Station LLC, which is owned by Wright Development Group. So has that changed from the last time? All right. My question is from the last time we were. Yes. Well, <laughs> it has flipped because it was. Yes, yeah, we is the third were no time longer partners flipped. with uh, a local home builder. Okay. That originally. Had my question people. here: If we approve these changes, does everything else stay in the, the agreement that we made with them? for their contribution for every unit sold so much money comes back to the city is that still in play here or does this at change this, everything at this point uh the way i understand it right is coming to to the city council to ask for some minor architectural changes to the buildings uh you know we've discussed a couple of other issues but they have not come forward with those yet. So at this point, what you would be approving would be the changes in the architectural style. It has well, nothing to do with uh, the, the contributions or the other. But that will make my decision up here tonight which direction I go because some reason is I have no agreement. I, I have no idea which one we under anymore. This has changed ownerships three times and I have no idea which is going on. Second of all, has the fire department seen this proposal that you are changing that building? The rooftop and adding a roof to the garage area has the fire department approved that the roofs on the outdoor parking areas i believe were discussed a couple of years ago uh, i would have to go back and check the documents but i believe the plans that we have show those as being garages so i think those came before the council a few years ago when the original project was approved um i as far as the fire department looking at the roof structure, again, this roof is not going to cover the entire building. It's going to be almost, for lack of a better term, sort of like a mansard roof that just goes around the outside edges. So when you're on the ground, it I, gives I, the appearance. I totally understand the, the okay. rooftop for the, the building. Okay. I don't remember ever putting a, I remember approving the underground garage, but mm -hmm. I don't remember ever seeing a plan that they were going to put a roof on a garage cover a parking area outside i do not remember that plan so besides that i mean that's to me that's a major change in this plan right now and i don't know what agreement we are on with this i don't know what since they took their partner split up or whatever mm -hmm. that is my concern here does everything still stay intact of the proposal that was first presented to this council or has those proposals have always does change now. I don't want them to come back and say, well, we granted this. I thought also they could not take any more occupancy permits would be issued for people to move in there until some understandings were made with the, the funding. That's correct. So he just told me that there are some people moving in there, possibly moving in there. Okay. No, I, I don't think, well, I, I'll let him speak for himself, but no, we have not issued any new occupancy certificates for that building in probably close to two years. So you're trying to tell me in two years there hasn't been anyone that moved in that building? In That's years, what you're telling me. No new owners Do you have any on retainer now to move into that building? No, we do not. All right. So my question again is I'd like to know if all that other 
stuff that was in the contract proposed with this project from day one is still intact before I vote on this. That would probably be something we might want an opinion from the city attorney, but I don't believe they're asking for any other changes to the PUD agreement that was adopted as an ordinance uh, for this development. So, so I, I don't know why anything else would change because, again, this request is specific to just the architectural uh, design changes. It has nothing to do with any uh, uh, impact fees or anything else. It's strictly an architectural change for them to go forward with it. Uh, I, I, I would like legal opinion on that then because I, th that's got to be agreement that's got to be cleared out that, you know, they change ownership now or their partner left. That needs to still be intact because that donation was not directly to the city. That was to help fund the train station, and that's always been in there. Mm -hmm. And I, I just will pass on to the attorney then, but I sure. I cannot support that until I get the answer from from that. Yeah, I'd like to recommend that we base any votes and decisions tonight strictly on what's before us as far as the architectural changes. I think we've got a week to have the attorney look into the situation that you're concerned about, that I'm concerned about. And, and if we want to make uh, the council's final decision pending the findings of that, that's okay, and we can do that next week. So I'd like to keep tonight's committee to this. We're not requesting anything else. Right. At that's point. what you're saying. We're only asking from a marketing standpoint to be able to okay. publish this, that, that we want to market this product now. That's all. Okay. Alderman Wesley. My only concern is I really would like to see the first proposal that they put in that they did say they were putting garage a roof over that because I don't remember that discussion before. You're asking me now to give you approval to add a, a rooftop for outdoor parking. Oh, well, no, I'm sorry. I want to I want to make this it, we're not looking for a rooftop for parking. But you're looking for a shelter for the cars. For for the lower on the on the ground level on the east side it, of building one where there's where there's surface parking we're looking to enclose it, and spots. I totally agree but in the first proposal that was not in there I will tell you that that was not on there the very so, first proposal it was not it, the garage was I believe asked for a year underground or so after that yes underground no. So, Underground and the, the upper level was... Uh, let, let, let's make this easy. Of Alderman Wesley, if your concern is that the fire department... Well, uh, if there's an accessibility question or whatever, whether whether it was in an old proposal or not, it's before us tonight. So, I mean, if we if we think it's, it's acceptable, great. And if there's anything that we want to contingent upon, be it fire department or anything else that would need some, uh, some homework done, we can certainly throw that into the motion. Is there anything else? I thought you had a few no, questions. Okay, Alderman Police. The mayor. Oh, was first. oh I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, different direction. Uh, what's the status of the commercial rentals? Anything happening on the first floor? No. We had one uh, uh, one commercial tenant, and he has uh, uh, went bankrupt. He's out of business. At some point, not wishing to delay this, would it be helpful to you? I don't want to force something that doesn't work in the marketplace, but if you increase the residential uh, to the first floor, would that be helpful to your project, the success of it, or are you happy with continuing the commercial on buildings two and three? Right now, we're happy to go forward with the uh, commercial on buildings two and three, but like I said, we, we have a, a master marketing plan that incorporates this elevation that we feel that uh, we might have more of a captive um, audience or our market if we can you know once once we can go okay. forward okay uh, alderman police yeah regarding the covered garage i mean he's not taking away any green space he's just going to cover the parking lot right correct correct what it what we plant it not taking any parking spots away uh matter of fact i think it was fully permitted uh, it was all permitted so the fire department had reviewed it approved it uh, it was going to be sprinkled. Um, everything is just that eight outdoor spots were going to be covered with parking, with a uh, with a with a masonry building. Aren't there walls there now? No, right now we uh, we just have uh, fencing up to cover it. Okay. Um, 
Mr. Thornton, did you, I mean, if, if I go ahead and make this motion with those facade changes, I, I suggested, do you have any major opposition to that? Would you, because I, I just want to be clear, though. Right now, this is the one we proposed, and we had a second proposal, which... And it would be, and it would be neither of those? Well, what... Uh, but it would be... This is the first one I asked for, then the second one that he's going to pull up here in just a second. This is actually incorporating all the colors that we have in building one. Right, and I think the only thing I'm asking for on this one is that your uh, brick color change elevations line up with all three buildings. So your brick color pattern on the existing building, that you maintain that on the other two buildings. Okay. Um, I, the only, we actually looked at that. The only reason we didn't go forward, because right now, if you see the, the lighter yellow brick that we have in building one, only on the sixth floor, if we did that with the Renaissance stone separating that, it would create more of a top heavy building. We actually had that done at one time with a two foot wide, um, line that we have in building two, where it's, it's right below, right below, uh, the fifth floor windows. If we carried that to the sixth floor, when we did it once and looked at it, it looked like the whole building was top heavy. That's why we didn't, that's why. Well, what about keeping your Renaissance down. stone at the same elevation as the aluminum? So that to somebody who doesn't know the difference between stone and aluminum, they basically look like the same, the same thing. We could do that and then eliminate the, the, the second heavy line that we have. Because right now we put the heavy line. Uh, yeah, I, I'm saying keep your heavy line where it was. Okay. Because I, I'm always, I, I just think that horizontal feel is critical to, to prairie style feeling right. And while those two buildings may feel a bit more prairie style by themselves, when you have the mismatched building, I'm concerned it's going to look like an oh somebody messed up. We can up. do that. No, we I, can do that. That's that's that's. that's so I want to know that you're okay with that, and I'll be more than happy to talk to you after the meeting, offline during the week, whatever, to, to confirm what it is that my intention is here. But I want to ask if anybody on the council has any disagreement to what we're asking for here. So other than Alderman Police's hands, I don't see any opposition. Alderman Police. In building two and three, then we're getting rid of that, whatever, that yellow coming down the middle, right? That's gone. The way the, the units lay out, we don't have that bay. And quite frankly, we're glad that we're not going to have that bay in buildings well, two and three. That's what, yeah, I don't even like that thing. It, it looks, okay. It's a maintenance issue also. And it's right now in building one because of the load carrying, it's EFIS. Anybody who's had EFIS in the Midwest, we just got done working on it again, and we'd rather get rid of it if we can and have it an entire masonry building. Couldn't agree with you more. Okay, then I will make a motion to approve all the changes you're asking for with the, um, with the council's recommendation to maintain those, those brick color change elevation heights and maintain that strong horizontal detail at the same uh, height above uh, grade. Um, and then go ahead and incorporate all the other changes that you need to for marketability and aesthetics. Is, is there a second? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Question. Uh, on the question, sorry. I are thought we going, were doing the question. Are we going to add the, uh, until we find out about that parking roof, or the cover? Oh, yes. Uh, is that part of the motion that the building department gives us the confirmation on that? Because I don't remember that. We can certainly make that contingent to final approval. And as the motioner, I mm -hmm. agree with it. Does the seconder? Alderman Shockey? Okay. Okay, so let's finish. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Mo and one abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that is the last of the issue, the items for this evening. Items to be considered at future meetings, the Land Vision Unified Development Ordinance. John, do you have a uh, gut feeling that January is going to be the last ZBA meeting on this? Actually, uh, the December 21st ZBA meeting, uh, we're anticipating them right, to that's give that's final that's approval. Uh, Ross and I just finished doing a couple of... Uh, Odds and ends on it today, so he's making up copies for distribution to the ZBA members. Um, so we expect that to be coming to you uh, for Jan in January. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, the other uh, item for future uh, meetings is the patio zoning changes um, ordinance issue. 
And we won't even need to elaborate on that this evening. Is there anything anybody else would like to see on future? Oh. I just had one informational comment. Seems yes. apropos to make it at this point. I will be bringing uh, some proposals to you next week to replace the last two heating units at this end of the building. Uh, they were budgeted for this year. I finally uh, got the second bid yesterday. The third contractor is not returning my calls. The couple of bids I've got are within a couple hundred dollars of each other. Uh, but since it is over $10,000, the city manager felt it appropriate I bring it to council. So next week, that will be an item for your consideration. So is turning the heat off this evening your ploy to make sure that we vote yes on this when it comes before us? Yes, it was. Excellent. Okay. All right, then I'll make a motion to it. Oh, I'm sorry, Alderman Shockey. Is there any way that we can make a motion tonight to have that done or approve it <laughs> so that he can go ahead with it? No. 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 I don't think so. Okay. No. Final has to happen at council. Yeah, this has part, been part of a three-year program to replace all of the heating units throughout the entire city hall building. So. <laughs> so if we unintentionally nodded our heads, it would work. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else for future meetings? No. Motion to adjourn. Move. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. I'm calling to order the Finance and Administration Committee meeting. And uh, will the uh, minute taker please reflect all members present except for Alderman Coles, who stepped out, I believe, for a moment. And I do declare a quorum. I make a motion to approve minutes dated November 12, 2009. Is there a second? Second. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is item number four, a report and recommendation regarding the 2009 proposed property tax levy. And with that, uh, Mr. Wilson, if you could take us through. Thank you, Chairman Winger. Uh, I just want to briefly go through the PowerPoint uh, I sent out in the packets to you last week. Like uh, but it looks strikingly similar to last year's PowerPoint presentation, just with updated numbers. Uh, first, just the history of the the rate per hundred dollars of EAV that have been in place for the city since '03. Uh, you'll notice that this year's proposed rate is the same as last year's actual rate. On uh, preparing the levy, um, especially with the economic conditions, I assumed an EAV increase of 4.99% as well as a levy increase of 4.99%. Um, honestly, I would not be surprised if the EAV was less than that, um, but just for presentation purposes, uh, since you'll notice in my memo, the rate is just a function of the levy divided by the valuation, so it's not something we actually consciously um, hone in on, so uh, it's just a mathematical output. Uh, for this year, you'll see the different rates we're looking to levy uh, for each of the particular line items. Uh, each of these line items are below what the budget amounts are, so there's no issue so far as you know levying more than we're going to spend. So legally, we're going to be okay in those areas. The one thing of note um, is the police pension levy. Uh, if you notice in the memo, the actuarial valuation um, for funding that the police pension fund provided me was $659,177, which is pretty significantly up from last year's, um, primarily due to the economy. However, you know, since April 30th, the market has come back uh, pretty significantly. So next year's levy request, you know, presuming the markets continue their current course, should be, should be uh, easily not worse, hopefully, hopefully a lower number as the markets have come back and the additional contributions start to gain money. Um, so unfortunately, they are a year behind the markets on this, but um, you know, we have funded them to their actuarial request in the years past, and we're gonna build that request into the budget this year as well. Uh, just the history of the, the valuation of the city, and you know, as you see, it's pretty, pretty smooth uh, up there, a little bit nonlinear jump between 05 and 06, but um, you know, averaged out over time is pretty linear. 
Um, that's just a, an estimate of the 09 number is just an estimate at 4.99% above the 08. Um, again, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not that number, um, perhaps, perhaps lower than that number, but um, that was used for the estimate. It's history of the amount of the levies. Um, everything except 09 is actual amounts. Uh, you will notice a dip um, from 03 to 04 to 05. That's when the last bonds that the city had um, completely rolled off the books. And then from there, just the incremental levy increases over time. Um, and the 09 levy, like I said, is just the estimate. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, you know, due to the tax cap that we're under, uh, we're subject to the lesser of 5% or CPI plus new growth. Uh, the CPI figure the county gave us uh, last year was 0.1%, so one-tenth of 1%. I did check the uh, CPI website today. Um, from October 08, excuse me, from November of 08 through October of 09, um, CPI did increase three-tenths of 1%, so perhaps we might get lucky and, and get three-tenths or four-tenths of 1%, but I certainly don't see it actually being anywhere near uh, the 5% cap. However, as I also referenced in the memo, there is a compounding factor on this. And if we don't levy the money and we don't receive the money, you know, get credit for the money, then the money's gone forever and, and we're always trying to catch up on the money that we didn't levy. So um, we did the 5% just to make sure we didn't miss any monies that were possibly due to us. Um, we're not, you know, going off board or, or anything like that. It's just consistent with what we've done many years uh, historically going through. That's all I have, and I will kick it back to Alderman Winger uh, for a motion and or questions. Okay, thank you. So in the motion itself, how would you like it to read? Would you like uh, me to like, make a motion to propose a 2009 levy and, and then give the dollar amount and the 4.99% or uh, how should it read? I'm trying to remember how we did in the past. Uh, maybe if the mayor or her, Helen Wilson could help me. Um, I know the ordinance itself references an amount, and then the exhibit um, ties out to those amounts. Um, but if anybody has a stronger recollection than I do, I'd be open I to that. I think the recommendation is to make a motion to approve the 2009 levy at $2,759,267. Okay. That is a motion. Works for me. Okay, that, that's my motion. Is there a second? second. second. And the question, I Alderman have, Eugene was. I there. have one question. Is that the levy that we've been asking for all along 4.99 for the past couple of years? Correct. We have not upped our levy at all. No, if, if you go over the 4.9 or, you know, if you go over 5%, um, then you, then you, have, then the you have to do the or... truth and taxation hearing. Um, some of you may be familiar. You have to put in the paper with right. the black box around it. Um, yeah, that's not something that we've done. I've looked back. Probably, I think we have levies going back 10 years downstairs. And, they, and we have they, never gone higher than 4.99 that we know of. Not that I can find, no. Um, with new growth, there have been a couple of years where the levy went above 5%, right. but that was based upon new growth numbers, not right. something that the council actively did. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is items to be considered at future meetings. A, the five-year CIP plan dated for January 2010. Item B, Channel 6 policies and procedures. Uh, and item C, business license ordinance amendment. Any other items, Mr. Mayor? Uh, I think you need a second, second motion to approve the uh, police pension levy as well. Assuming we want to fund it. I believe it goes or under one. Or is that one. included in the other figure? Under one. The police, the police pension levy is all in that uh, $2.7 million figure. Okay, thank you. Under one. Any other items? I make a motion to adjourn. Is I'm there moved. a second? And the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to call the December 10th meeting of Public Health, Safety, and Judiciary committee to order uh, the, I'm it's it's hard to talk with the cold I'm shivering <laughs> a little bit but if you'll show that everybody is still here I don't know why um, 
First of all, we have approval of minutes of October 8th, 2009 to make the motion. Do I have a second? All in favor? Questions? It passes. There's only one item tonight really to talk about, and I ask that this be put on. Um, I had a long presentation here uh, that I'm not going to go into because of the late date and the cold. Uh, just to mention a couple of things. We received, all of us received a letter from, a letter from the county board talking about the video, Illinois Video Gaming Act, uh, and they do say that the research is compelling that double-digit increases in crime and personal bankruptcy are a consequence every time video gaming is legalized. And the second thing they say is it's the most addictive form of gambling there is. Uh, 26 of the communities around us and counties have already banned uh, video g gambling. Uh, another 30 some are considering banning it. Uh, I just heard, the reason I've asked this to be put on the meeting is I heard that there's a possibility that Springfield may, in their infinite wisdom, uh, say that if we have not banned uh, in some way video poker by the end of the year that they may tell all these communities that they have to have it for two years and uh, That means that if we don't pass something This year that they may be able to push it on us for two years even if we want it or not so what I'm suggesting tonight is not to just take and throw video gambling out the window I'd like to but I won't do that I'll just make the suggestion that we have a resolution to opt out of the Video Gaming Act until the state gets their act together and decides exactly what the parameters are and uh, what, what the money is and how it will be handled. Uh, so I'll make that as a motion. Um, in, other I words, in other words, this can be changed after the first of the year if we like, but... Dan, I'd rather ch you change the motion a little bit instead of saying until they get their act together, until you say the gaming, the gaming commission comes up with a valid, acceptable proposal. It's a little bit That's more fine. polite. That's fine. Alderman Coles? I'd suggest uh, that we should get an ordinance ready that when, it, when we decide it's already put up by... Uh, Mr. Bond, who's our lawyer, and have it ready. And then uh, I agree with you that we can't vote on anything except uh, if we, we can't. Temporary. Because we don't know what the state is going to do. But right. we should have an ordinance ready so in case we do decide to opt out, we can just vote on it right away and have it all set. If it I think that's one of the things that we should do. I think that's an excellent idea, and I think we should follow the uh, DuPage County ordinance very closely because they handle it very well in their ordinance. I don't know if everybody has a copy of it, but I do, and I'd be happy to have copies made and given to everybody, So, uh, and, and Mr. Bond as well, to make sure that it's legal for our community. Mr. Mayor. Uh, word of caution. And I'm not a favor of video gambling, and I'm not an advocate of it. But there are consequences of uh, what we and all the other towns are doing. You need to be aware of that as well. Um, this is the funding mechanism for the capital bill. Uh, right now, approximately 10% of the communities statewide and counties have opted out. At the point where 20% opt out, the, the system basically crashes. There's not enough income stream to support the capital bill. Uh, in the capital bill, Wooddale has 100,000 from Rebel Eddy. It has 250,000 from Pankow. And according to what we heard last Thursday, apparently we have 2.8 million in uh, IDOT funding in there. So if this does fall, uh, the two options they're talking about is increasing everybody's gas tax at the rate of seven cents per gallon and or increasing the estate income tax by 50% over and above what we're paying now. So that's that will be the consequence. I understand that and I, uh, well, let's put it this way. If, uh, if it's a choice between having another bridge port in town here 
or having a, a raise in the gasoline tax, I'll pick the gasoline tax. Uh, I'm sure you all know you've written the paper about Bridgeport. Uh, so I still would like to do this. I, for my, what I understood, that the amount of taxes we would be getting back probably would be about 50000 a year. Uh, those grants that you're talking about, uh, I don't know if, if, if they're based completely on the video gambling. Uh, but I know that our share was supposed to be 50000 So, Mr. Uh, Alderman Police. The 50000 you're talking about, I think, is the additional money we would get. But there, there was some things that they were saying when we went to the seminar. They were talking about if you opt out, sounded like they were basically cutting you out of everything. And personally, before I say... No, right now because I'm not, I don't like video gambling. I'd like to get the legal opinion because I don't want to just opt us out of all capital capital money. Well, they were that's... they were very vague and very confusing, and I still still have never gotten anything. That's why I... I'm saying that we should have something in in place until to opt out until we get the full story as exactly what the state is going to do and how they're going to do this at that point we can make the decision to go with it or not go with it but i'm just afraid that the state in their wisdom is going to say if you don't if you have not opted out by the end of the year you don't have a choice your town is going to have to take this for the next two years and then you can make a decision after that and i don't rather not have that kind of activity in Wooddale. And, uh, you know, when you compare us to other communities uh, who are laying off people and who are basically almost broke, uh, we are in good shape. And I don't, I think we can get along without that $50,000 or whatever it is until the state makes up their mind and does something more logical than causing people to use something that's that addicting. Alderman Coles. Well, I suggested that we have one ready. I didn't say we had a vote on it. No, I'm, I, I'm I saying... I just said we just have one ready in case we want to. I'm uh, saying we should... Gambling is up to the individual. Yes, as and far I'm... As I'm concerned. And we have casinos where they can go to if they want to. There's no... I'm not saying we shouldn't... Nobody should gamble at all. What I'm saying is that to... to Put it down that we are not going to allow it until we get the full facts. Okay, we're not, we're not taking it off the board completely. We're going to disallow it until we get all the facts from the state as to how it will be done and how it will be run. And then we can have an ordinance, hopefully based on the DuPage County ordinance, to vote on later on to either, either approve it or eliminate video gambling forever. So what I'm looking for tonight is the motion just, or the second to the motion. Second. Just to have something on the books now so the state can't drop it on us. Alderman E. Wesley. My question is if we go, I don't know how to put it on the books because I would assume that it would have to go by ordinance. If we pass the ordinance, that means we opt out of it totally. Well, you know. I just. We can am wait till. I, am I right, Mayor? If you go to ordinance that it's... we can't do it tonight as a fact anyway. We have to wait for the approval from the attorney next week. So uh, what I'd like to do is have the attorney have something ready for us that is legal that'll keep us out of it until we get all the facts. It's that simple. All right. I have a second. Um, let me call the vote on this. It's getting colder and later as time goes on. Uh, all in favor of having the attorney come up with something for next week that will opt us out for the time being until we get all the facts from the state on the video gambling. Yep. And Aye. 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 Is there any nays? It's approved then. Thank you. Uh, items considered for future meetings is just the liquor code amendments. And does anybody else have anything? Otherwise, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. So move. All in favor? Thank you. Let's go home and warm up.